Hi everybody and welcome to my Airfix 148 scale Avro Anson Mark 1 build. Now I'm going to go against convention here and I'm going to build this kit up as much as I can before I come to paint it because I figure it's an Avro Anson, it's a twin engine aircraft in 148 scale, it's going to be quite big and I think if I try to build it as a whole and then paint and weather and do the Declan, it's going to be it's going to be very cumbersome, it's going to be very hard to handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off at uh, part one of the instructions and I'm going to go through as far as I can to roughly it's about uh, part 42 I believe and that will get me to a completed fuselage. There's some bits further on where you add the glazing, uh, the nose cone which again I will add to the uh, final fuselage before I come to paint and uh, do the Declan. But that's my plan. I'm going to build as much as I can fuselage wise to make, to make say painting and weathering and decaling so much easier. So I can put that to one side when it's done, then I can work on the wings, build them as, as complete units and then attach them to the main fuselage late, later on. That's my plan. So we're going to go from obviously number one here all the way through to 42 here and we should ultimately, like I say, end up with an almost completed fuselage. Um, like I say, I think personally it just makes sense to me to, to do it this way because trying to handle it once it's a full-sized aeroplane is going to be a bit of a nightmare. So that's that's my thinking. Um, the colour scheme that I'm going to go for is this one here. It's the number three training command, number 31 general reconnaissance school, Royal Canadian Air Force, Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island in Canada 1941. And I think this yellow and sand and brown scheme would look absolutely fabulous on, on this aeroplane. Because it's such a large kit and this vibrant yellow, uh, or the training yellow I should say, it would look superb I think. So that's the scheme, scheme I'm going to go for. Like I say, I'm going to build it in section. Uh, I've seen some builds online of the, uh, the Anson and the kit itself, the actual fit, looks superb. So I'm really, as long as I build it correctly, I'm not concerned about having unsightly seams when I do come to join all the painted parts together. And if I do, so be it, I'll have to go back and I'll have to tidy them up. So, my plan is, as I say, to build as much as I can before I, I finally paint it. So to help me get to part 42 of the instructions, I've gone and I've removed all the parts off the sprue that I need to enable me to build the fuselage as a whole. And what I've done, I've cut them all off, cleaned them up, and here they are in a, uh, an old um, um, takeaway container. And as you can see, the parts themselves, if I just take one of these side frames, move out of the way, the parts themselves are exquisite. The moulding is beautiful, uh, the detail is superb, and the actual amount of cleanup that it, that it took to get to this stage was really minimal. I've added the, uh, the Lewis gun just onto the side there, just to aid with um, painting later. But the whole moulding is it's, it's gorgeous. If I just show you the, uh, the radio set. Again, I've glued it together. It's not a complete um, radio set. There is a small table, which is just here, that it sits on. But again, but the moulding is beautiful. And for me to actually paint and, and detail this by brush should be fairly straightforward. What I'll do, I'll spray the whole thing in uh, NATO black because I think if you use uh, something like XF1 which is just a, a pure black it's too dark and too stark um, and if you look at anything that's black just look around your house or, or you, wherever you are now something that's black it's not truly black it'll have a, a grey uh, hue to it so I'll, I'll spray this whole thing in NATO black let it dry and then I'll go over the tube work here and the framework with um, XF71 interior green and I'll just, just use a brush. It'll take me a couple of uh, coats to get the, uh, the green on but that's the way that I'm going to choose to do it because it's just nice and straightforward. Then once that's done I can go all the dials with uh, the appropriate colours be it yellow, red, blue, white, silver or whatever the colour may be for the dials and uh, I think once I've done that it'll ap look absolutely superb. Airfix do provide uh, decals for you but I do think to really do it justice, you need to hand paint it. And if you and if you if you can hand paint it and you're confident in doing that, it's the way I, I'd 
I definitely uh, recommend because once it's done it will look stunning. Um, you can um, have some additions with some decals if you so wish. You can you can cut the uh, the sheet up and just um, dot some of the placards around. But personally, for the actual dials and everything else, I will hand paint them. To aid with the build itself, I've I've gone ahead and I've already glued some of the bits to the um, the fuselage floor. As you can see. I've added the uh, one of the main spars just really so when I do come to paint and handle it I've got something to hold on to um, it just makes life so much easier and I figure doing it this way I can the actual painting process will be a lot easier um, I've added the uh, radio op seat I've added the um, navigator seat I've added the second dicky seat I've added that wobble pump and the center console and uh, what I'll do, I'll give this a, a base coat of uh, black to, to give it some false shadow. Then I'll go over XF71, which is the uh, interior green. And then I'll go through and I'll highlight any details again. And then I'll add uh, other parts subsequently. But initially, just to make my life easier, and so I'm not trying to um, manipulate small parts like the wobble pump, I thought I'd glue them all on. And uh, I think it should aid building it really really well. Um, the fit so far has been exemplary. The plastic like I say is very very good um, and I think once all the parts are actually glued together it will look outstanding. Over the past few days I've been working on the cockpit of the Avro Anson and I've got to say I've been looking at some builds online, some superb builds online, but each one I noticed people who try to use the airfix decal to try and apply it over the, the, uh, the actual uh, plastic part have had real difficulties because it's a large decal trying to cover a large part with a lot of raised detail. So I thought I, I could have used air scale decals to do each individual instrument that way, but I thought no, I've, the, I've got the, uh, the airfix decals, the, they look great to me, so how can I overcome that? So what I decided to do was use a punch and die set and cut out each individual de uh, instrument from the uh, decal sheet, cut them out, and then apply them individually. To the plastic part and I've got to say it turned out really really well. Here's the actual part itself and you can see all those lovely instruments. It's, it's a bit shiny at the moment because it's had a gloss coat nothing more because I want to give it a bit of a, a wash just to bring out some of the detail of the, uh, the rudder bars. But as you can see a bit of time, a little bit of effort and it turns out really really good. All I've done to the instrument panel is I painted it black um, some of the instruments are I painted in red or yellow as required for the boost and the, uh, and the uh, was it red for the boost and I think yellow for the oil pressure gauges just to uh, give them a bit of interest okay you can't necessarily see it very well but it's there but the actual gauge itself looks fantastic so I'm really really happy with that and again the punch and die set that, that I use this one that I've had for a long long time is this one it's by Waldron Model Products. I don't even get it anymore, to be fair. I've had this for about 15 years. But this is a sub-miniature punch and die set. And, they, and there's another flavour. There's also just a punch and die set, which is slightly larger dies. And what you get in the box is you get the die, which ranges from 0.063 down to 0.018. And it's just a piece of perspex on a, on a metal back. And obviously each hole, it corresponds to a punch of the same size. And the, these are the punches themselves, again from 0 0.018 down to 0 0.063 and all these are a shafts of metal, um, circular precision um, shafts of metal that you put in the corresponding um, die, tap away with a hammer and it gives you a perfect circle. So it's very handy for doing things like instruments or any, if you want a super detail you can use it to cut out you know, bits of uh, um, plastic card it looks great so I'm very happy with actually how this has turned out um, yeah look it, it's my it looks fantastic the only decals that aren't here fix to be fair on, on there you've there's a couple of air scale placards that red one there and also that um, other larger placard there just because I wanted to give it visual interest looking at line at some of the instrument panels online of real aircraft there's a lot of there's a lot going on down there placard wise so I thought I'd use those just to uh, give it a little bit of interest and I've also been working on the uh, transmitter and receiver that you get with the kit down the bottom here that's a type 1082 uh, receiver 
uh, very accurate by FX. Again, looking online at uh, the real the real deal, it looks absolutely fantastic. And above it, they're always paired these, these bits of kit from early aircraft with a Type uh, 1083 transmitter. So it's transmitter at the top, receiver down the bottom. There's a lot of cabling going between the two, which I'm not going to show, but. The actual detail that FX have got into it is very, very good and, incre and incredibly accurate. Again, this has just been painted uh, with a few decals. I think there's two decals. There's a decal there and there's a decal there. The rest has just been painted by hand. Nothing particularly clever. Um, yeah, it was very simple to paint. It's a little bit time consuming. But I think once it's in the aircraft, you know, it's going to look, it will look fantastic. Um, I'm going to give it a satin varnish just to turn it down. I don't want to give it a dead flat varnish because I don't think... Um, I think it's too flat and I like that little bit of um, vibrance to it if you like but no it's coming along incredibly well at the moment and I'm very happy with how it's going I'm working on the rest of the interior that's come along incredibly well um, and hopefully I'll have some more details and updates for you soon as you can see since I last uh, spoke to you I've actually made a wee bit of progress it's amazing what having a few days off from work can actually do uh, I'm up to, up to part 29 on the instructions and I have to say the whole building experience has gone really really well everything on here is out the, out the kit other than the seat belts which are red hard um, the belts are the uh, wireless operator and the navigator I got from the uh, 148 scale uh, blending build uh, they were actually designed for that and to my to me they look a bit over scale they're not brilliant but they do add a little bit of interest to what would be otherwise be a rather bare uh, rear part of the aircraft um, down the back there I've just uh, basically painted I, I assume that uh, item down the bottom there is like a life raft so I thought I'd paint it yellow give it interest obviously you've got those winding bars on the rear door bulkhead and you've got the uh, the fire extinguisher which I just painted in a gold colour with some silver for the, uh, the actual banding that holds it on but like I say other than the, the Eddard belts everything else is out the uh, out of the kit and like the decals for the instrument panel they turned out really really well I'm really happy with those um, yeah a bit of careful painting a very light wash I give it a very light wash of uh, grime from uh, Migamo uh, and a satin varnish and literally that is it the gun I painted in gun metal a little bit lazy really and I gave that a, a, a nice uh, wash thinking to tone it down a little bit it hasn't toned it down as much as I, as I would have liked but again when you've got the uh, the fuselage the fuselage sides on I think it will darken it up and it'll look quite good talking of the fuselage halves I have those here and basically again this had a, a light wash um, hand painted this panel here a couple of air scale decals at the top there just to, for a wee bit of interest but yeah nothing very clever just some careful painting and this and a wash and it's, I think it looked great when it's put together and similarly the other side um, painted this because I assume it's like it's a heating duct it'll have cladding on so I thought I'd just paint it in a, a cladding colour if you like um, yeah careful painting again and a wash and I think it looks really, really, really good. I think Airfix has done a superb job on the, uh, the kit so far, and I'm really, really happy with it. What I'll do, I'll take some photographs of these uh, finished items, and I'll put them on at the end of the video for you.